Am I holding it just at you? Actually, so you can actually okay, see perfect. me. Okay, <clears throat> perfect. Hello everybody, I'm Jennifer McGreeth. Uh, welcome to what I believe is a first in the province, a uh, trans-specific pride event in Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, today is Monday, July 16th, 2012. It's about uh, 5 p.m. We are standing in front of the amazing colonial building which uh, used to be where the uh, government of Newfoundland conducted their business. Um, I do have an agenda. Um, <clears throat> this is a Newfoundland trans visibility and trans pride flag waving event. We are here to, I guess, raise awareness of trans issues and hopefully an opportunity for uh, the many of our trans people in this province to, uh, I guess, learn about some trans people who are, I guess, out to the point where they're here today and let them know that they're not alone. Um, I'm going to speak for about five minutes and uh, we'll open the floor to anyone else that wants to speak. Um, we will wave the flag and then we will uh, move on. Um, so I guess we'll start with some basic, uh, basic 101. Um, Sexual orientation and gender identity are, are commonly linked together um, by so many people in this world without necessarily knowing the difference. Uh, obviously sexual orientation uh, talks about attraction to other people, where gender identity is about you as an individual and how you see yourself. Um, everyone, whether they're trans or not, has a sexual orientation and everyone, whether they're trans or not, has a gender identity. One of my favorite words I think we'll use today is CIS, CIS, which essentially means you are not trans. Um, I was going to get into definitions, but I think the best way to address this is to say we've been arguing for years over definitions and we can't seem to land on it. And, uh, if, you, if you dig out a dictionary, I'm sure there's something in there for gender and something in there for sex. Um, trans essentially means change. That's the best way to interpret that. I used to say uh, sex is between your legs and gender is between your ears, but that's not totally true either, because sex also deals with hormonal changes, which may or may not be accompanied by anatomical changes. <laughs> um, I think what separates the trans from everyone else under this lovely LGBTQAPTTTABCDFGEIEIO <laughs> acronym is, is the fact that we're looking at uh, physical changes. Uh, you can't stay in the closet if you're coming out, you're completely transitioning. In many cases, you're taking cross-sex hormones, you're having surgeries. So there's there's a healthcare component there that, that's, uh, that adds to that equation. 2013 declassification by the American Psychiatric Association. That's exciting news. In 1972, Homosexuality was delisted as a uh, mental illness. And 41 years later, finally, to my understanding, we're changing the old, out-of-date term gender identity disorder. And we're replacing it with gender dysphoria. And uh, this organization, I guess, is recognized around the world for their famous DSM, Diagnostic Statistics Manual, a book of mental illnesses and cures. And uh, is declassified as a mental illness. It's not. It's gonna. It's neither gonna be a mental illness or not a mental illness according to their draft. So they've also recognized that it's the physical uh, remedy. It's, it's the hormones and the surgeries that can rectify this issue. I guess we'll call it. I won't call it an illness. Um, I also wanted to briefly talk about. I guess the age and the time. The timetable. A huge focus, at least earlier today, at the other flag raising on youth. And I guess I want to remind everyone that there's a lot of older trans people out there that don't start the journey until they're later. In my case, I didn't even know I was trans until I was 33. And a lot of people who are younger can't actually start it because of various financial barriers, logistical barriers, social barriers. So don't forget, don't forget us old people. <laughs> Human rights, the rest of Canada versus Newfoundland. 
It's been a good year for the mainland. Ontario and Manitoba have added gender identity to their human rights code. Ontario also added gender expression, joining the Northwest Territories. The federal government passed a bill, and then, then uh, they called an election, so that got shelved. But there's another bill underway, and uh, it's promising that that's going to happen. Not so here in Newfoundland. Two years ago, they reviewed our human rights code and made it a human rights act. And they did not put either wording in there. They said it was not needed and it was too confusing. As recently as, uh, I think about six weeks ago, in question period, Jerry Rogers, of all people, um, asked a question of Minister Collins and asked him to, to do the right thing and add those words and he continued to say no. Again, citing those same reasons. As recently as today, the Human Rights uh, Commission, I guess, appeared at, at, at a Pride event and uh, talked about, I guess, the work that they're doing. But uh, bottom line is the, the wording still isn't there. And there's studies that have happened all over the world that says covering it under sex or mental illness is not enough. It's too confusing. It's too much work for the lawyers. <clears throat> Not surprisingly, I filed a human rights complaint and lost. Which leads into health care funding. Um, a lot of people talk about how cutting edge our health care system is. Um, the policy for uh, health funding for transition related surgeries is 16 years old and requires people to travel to Toronto uh, Clark Institute, which is now known as CAMH, an organization best known for labeling all trans people as uh, transvestic fetishists. Um, that's out of date and not totally accurate. Um, other provinces have come on board. They're recognizing the protocol of the World Professional Association for Transgender Health that says any team of doctors can do this. Uh, there's no need to create a specialist clinic and absolutely no reason to send people to travel. MCP will only cover certain procedures. Um, that's not right either. They will not cover any top surgeries, F to M or M to F, no matter what. That's not right either. If a doctor says something medically necessary, I think it needs to be covered. This is not a political issue. It has to be a human right issue. They also said we will not pay for procedures done in private clinics in Canada. Well, there's only one clinic in Canada for M to F, and uh, they said, no, we're not going to cover that. So, money is still an issue for trans people. It's bad enough that we lose our families, our friends, our jobs, our houses, our cars, our mental stability. We're still another year, mentally ill. And it's bad enough that we're going to have to come up with money now to pay for health care. Um, it's kind of a depressing talk, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's that's why I don't feel like celebrating. We've got a lot of work to do. And, uh, just the fact that I'm standing here and I have a job putting file folders on the shelf puts me in the top 10% income bracket of trans people in Canada. You know, many trans people are earning minimum wage or less. Some of them don't have jobs. This is a, a cry for help, or just an awareness issue, but there seems to be uh, a lot fewer people at this event than there were at uh, the other flag raising we saw earlier today. I just hope that when people say they're here to help the trans community, they really mean it, and they really take those steps to uh, get to know the trans people in their community. And every trans transition is unique. There's no one right way to do this. Okay, we have a trans flag, which was created by Monica Helms, of all people, in 1999, and made its debut at the Pride Parade of Phoenix, Arizona in 2000. The flag represents, uh, I guess we'll call it the transgender community, consists of five stripes. We've got light blue, light pink, which represents, I guess, the colors assigned to babies at birth and a white one in the middle that represents the transition process and everything else. I'm going to quote Monica Helms. The stripes at the bottom and the top and bottom are light blue, the traditional color for baby boys. The stripes next to them are pink, 
traditional color for baby girls. Stripe in the middle is white for those who are intersex, transitioning or consider themselves having neutral or undefined gender. That is such that no matter which way you fly it, it is always correct, signifying us finding correctiveness in our lives. I think that's a, a very powerful statement. And uh, I thank Monica Holmes for inventing this idea. And, uh, I thank all of you for coming out today. Um, I have no idea if there'll be a, an event like this at next year's Pride, but uh, if there is, hopefully there'll be a few more people. But, uh, we got to start somewhere. And, uh, is there anyone else that would like to say a few words on camera for YouTube? <laughs> Look at all those hands going up. <laughs> I guess we should uh, get some video footage of a flag waving. I forgot to bring a hockey stick. I was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the first time I've ever seen a trans flag in St. John's. So it's, uh, it's exciting stuff. Yeah. I'll let the wind wave it as that. Yeah. Uh, you can flip it either way. Yes, see, you, you can hold it this way. And we can hold it upside down. <laughs> what do you call this? Vertical? Yeah. <laughs> Trans flag waving. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Telegram for uh, covering the story. And, uh, how long has the video gone on, Sarah? Eleven. <laughs> Red button. Let's just get one more shot of that colonial building there. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for uh, for watching, and uh, y'all have a great day.